Hey, this is Aaron. And Blake, we're AB Data. Thanks for walking through this Alteryx Weekly Challenge with us. In this video, we're taking a look at Alteryx Weekly Challenge number 230. Take a look, it's in a book. As always, the Alteryx Weekly Challenge can be found through the Alteryx community on the Academy page. Here we're taking a look at Weekly Challenge number 230. If you'd like to follow along, take a look at the YXZP start file and open up your Alteryx designer. We'll start here by taking a look at the output. Looks like we're going to use some data to create an interactive chart with the top 10 best-selling authors overall. We'll identify the best-selling book per year and put it in a reporting table. And then we have a report header and footer that we'd like to create as well. So taking a look at the raw data Excel file that's provided to us, we have six fields of information. Uh, we're really concerned about the authors, the titles, and, and the weeks on the list. And one attribute that's interesting, looking at the author field, many of our titles are attributed to multiple authors and they're separated by either a comma or the word and. And we need to parse records like this onto individual lines. So first we'll use a formula tool to standardize the delimiting character that separates one author from another. So here we'll use a quick replace function where we look at the author field, look for the word and, and replace it with a comma. That way, when we use our text to columns tool to parse our data in the next step, it's one consistent character that we're looking for. So we'll bring a text to columns tool onto the canvas and split to rows, and we see our record count jump from 1393 up to 1580. And Alteryx is warning us that 13% of our records are not okay. So we've got some white space either as a leading or trailing character due to our text to columns process. So here we can run a trim function on the author field. I'm also gonna nest a replace function so we can get rid of the by and space at the beginning of each of the author lines. And we'll hit the run button and take a look at the result. But we should have a nice clean string under the author field. We are going to identify the most popular title by year, so we want to standardize the date that's provided to us, and we can do so with the date time parse tool. So we'll teach Alteryx that the incoming date field is the string that we want to convert. We'll use the mm slash dd slash yy pattern, and Alteryx will create the date time out in a standardized Alteryx date time format. I'm going to use a select tool to drop off the original date and keep the Alteryx provided date timeout. Also take the opportunity to convert the weeks on a list to a double so that we can perform some math on it downstream. First we'll use a formula tool to define the year and here there's a date time function called date time year where we can just plug in the date field reference and this we can leave as a string. It's just a categorical identifier. We're going to pick the top performing book from each year. So first we'll want to sort the data table based on our main attribute of the number of weeks on the list. And now that this is a double or a number, it should sort from high to low for us as we have it in descending order. And lastly, we don't care about all 1,580 records. We want to identify only the top one record per year. So we can use one sample tool and configure it to take the first one row and group by the year. All right, excellent. So now we have the eight records 
the eight years of data that were provided to us. And using a table tool, we can isolate the fields that we want to report on and put them in their desired order and even do a couple of renames. So in our output we're trying to match, we first have a year field, then we have the author, or pardon me, the title, and the title is title cased, it's fitting. And here we'll standardize the name for the weeks on the list so we can match the output table. Let's go ahead and add a browse tool and hit the run button and we can see what our uh, first output looks like. We've got a very simple reporting table. Let's go ahead and add these tools to a container. And these are going to be our best selling books by year. We're going to tap into the data stream at the select tool after we've updated our dates and converted the weeks on the list to a number. And now we want to do an analysis based on the author name. So before we send the data to the interactive charting tool, we will first summarize the data. So we'll grab a summarize tool. We want to group by the author. We also want to know the total number of weeks that they're on the list. And we can use the rename functionality of the select tool to go ahead and take care of that rename. And then we'll do a count distinct function on the titles. So we can identify the number of books on the list on the secondary axis. So before we limit the data stream with another sample tool, let's sort it and make sure that it's in the desired order. So we're going to show the top 10 authors based on the number of, I believe it's the number of weeks on the list. So I'm going to go ahead and make that weeks on the list the number one sorting priority. Excellent. And now let's take a sample tool and limit to data, the data stream to just the top 10 records. And these are the 10 records that we want to visualize using the interactive charting tool. So we'll run the button and uh, then configure the chart. So we need to run the workflow to pass the data into the interactive charting tool. And then we can start adding our layers. So first up, we'll have a bar chart with the author across the x-axis and the weeks on the list as the y-axis value. And it looks like we want to customize the appearance and the size of our chart a little bit. So within our interactive charting tool, over on the layer tab, we can choose the nice light blue that the output has for each of the bars. And we can go ahead and make this chart a little bit smaller. So maybe eight inches wide by five inches tall. All right. And so that should be good for the first layer. We can go ahead and hit the add layer button and then add in our scatter plots or our little points for the number of books. So we'll have, again, use the author as our X axis value. And it really depends on whether or not we want to use the secondary y-axis. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck the box to try to match the output results. So to view the output, we need to add a browse tool and then hit the run button. So now on our secondary stream, we have our interactive chart. Now we want to go ahead and attach our headers above the chart and the table. So using our report text tool, we can attach the text above each of these objects. So we'll have our top 10 best-selling authors. Here, if we're going to copy and paste the tools, we want to make sure that we're attaching it to the right type of reporting object. So here on our top stream, we have our best-selling books by year. We can do all kinds of fun formatting. For our purposes, we want to 
just attach the text and then take our independent reporting objects and position them or lay them out together. So first we'll use a union tool to stack these reporting objects into the same data stream. So here I'm, I'm using a union tool with a, a fairly uncommon configuration. We're going to auto config by position because these reporting objects have different field names. One's a, lay, a, a chart and one is a table. Once they're stacked in the same field together, we can take those two records and position them into one item using a layout tool. So here we're creating a new vertical layout with all records combined. So record number one, the first item we streamed into the union tool is shown on top. The top 10 list shows up below there. And while we can use the dedicated report header and report footer tools, find it much more convenient to just use report text tools and attach them above or below our reporting objects where we want to see them. So we wanted to have reading recommendations above our final output as the report header. And then for our report footer, we've got a one more report text that's attached below our output that says based on the New York Times bestseller list from 2011 to 2018. Thank you for learning with us today. Good luck on your Alteryx journey. For more information on custom training, managed service automations, and more, please visit our website at abdataconsulting.com.